right, we're back again on a lazy Sunday. We're getting ready to uh, start off the new week. I know that I'm getting ready to, to travel to the great city of Charlotte. Never been. Do a little work up there. So I think uh, getting time for all the leaves to be changing. So I think somebody was make, made the funny comment that, and which is amazing to me, that people actually travel to just places to just, just to see leaves changing. Uh, work. I did some work up in Maine and... I was amazed at the number of travelers that, why are you here? Leaves are changing. Well, they probably came out of New York where they don't have many leaves, you know. That's, I, I guess that could be fair. But yeah. I guess to me it's just weird because, you know, okay, I walk outside and I see the fucking <laughs> leaves changing, you know. You know yeah. but, but everybody's different, so I get to check that out. I've never been to Charlotte. I've always heard great things about Charlotte. I've never been... I, to my memory, I've never been, so I, it'll be interesting to check out what's what's going on. The guy I'm traveling with, I don't really know that well, so it'll be interesting to. He's kind of a he's kind of subdued would be the right word, uh, and uh, so as far as personality wise, he doesn't sound too outgoing. But you know, I don't know him very well. Yeah, he might be wild as fuck, man. As soon as you, oh, really? <laughs> as, soon as, you as soon as you get him out of the day, you never know. Twenty miles away from work. Yeah, you might pull his shirt open and start snorting cocaine. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make that joke. I make that joke at work, and Does everybody get uncomfortable. And everybody gets really uncomfortable really fast. So I don't know if it's because they're all doing cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, they it's all like, think he's doing cocaine. All right. Yeah, it's one of the two. They either think I really do it, or they, or or they do it, and they have this weird. You know, but uh, I, and I purposely do it because I live. I work in a kind of a straight edge shock of, value. Yeah, shock value. I say, <sighs> and I'll say some crazy stuff. It says, "Ah, oh, sounds like sounds like a good time. Sounds like cocaine strippers to me." You know, I say crazy <laughs> stuff like that, and they just look at me a little. You know. Yeah. And you know, I don't know. I just like to fuck with people like that because there's got to be some that you know that put on this persona. Oh, you know, no doubt. That, that they're like. Because, you know, what's fascinating is there is not a lot of drug testing in a lot of the white-collar offices. I mean, there is what when you get hired on doing this. But typically, unless you get hurt doing something, you know, you don't get drug tested. So a lot of these people work at the same place. I always wonder if they, they slip off and do something they're not supposed to. And then when you when you mention something that makes them all, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of stiffen up, get a little I, uncomfortable. Like, like, <laughs> wonder if they got caught. Yeah, it's yeah. like, like, shut up, fucker. Don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about the seven years that I've worked there, only one mill has required that we take a drug test when we showed up on site. Right, really? right, right, right. <clears throat> oh, so the, your, the people that you do the jobs for can ask that you take a drug yeah. test. They really? can, but they don't because we're a bunch of white collar. Right. Quote, unquote, white collar. Except for one, it did, out of Tennessee. Yeah, wow, that's wild. I I just thought y'all just walked in, did your thing, and and left. I thought if anybody would, your company would, not yeah. the people you work for. Well, yeah, I mean, well, we we you get drug tests when you get hired on. Yeah, you know, but like what he's saying is, um, if you're a contractor and you're um, in the trade skills per se, like you're a welder, you're a pipe fitter, you're a machinist, whatever, and you go to these mills, they make you drug test before you a lot of times before you go on to work a. X amount of time because you're because you're doing physical activity that you know if you're high or whatever you get hurt and or hurt other people or hurt other people so they require drug tests. Well, us you know we come strolling in we sign our little names on the thing and you know that's that which is awesome because God as many places we go it would suck man we'd be taking drug tests all the time yeah I mean constantly taking drug tests but I do think it's funny though all that to be said I'm not saying we should be made to take drug tests but I do like to. Throw a little shock value into the, you know, I mean, I mean like, yeah, and well, say something crazy, you know, just make them, just make them <laughs> stiffen up a little bit. Well, it sounds like after the initial interview and you get hired on at your company, uh, once you pass that initial drug test, and it's just a round of eight balls for everybody. <laughs> you know. I used to say some people don't think that way, you know. So. Yeah. Uh -oh. No, and, uh, and 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 honestly, to be all fair, <laughs> I would be shocked. <laughs> I would be shocked if they come through and swept through and, and busted more than one person out of the hundred and something that's in the office. If they busted more than one, I'd probably really. I would be. I would be shocked. Pete, personally, I mean, I just look at everybody and I've been around people that's done drugs before, and there are people people nah, can hide there's, it. There's there's got to be more than at least no. smoke weed. Yeah, that's I'm, what I'm saying. That's oh what, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. would get everybody. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the weed. But I'm talking about like 
not a bunch of cokeheads running around, I guess <laughs> no, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, shooting up heroin. <laughs> 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 but I do not free base cocaine. That's right. I do not free base cocaine. <laughs> but uh, with all that said, I get to I get to do a little traveling to, uh, this week. God, it seems like I've been traveling a lot lately, but, you know, trying to get it done for the holidays. Yeah. I mean, I used to travel uh, when I was with another company, and uh, I I felt like I was always on an airplane. And that's why I had, if you've ever heard me talk about my journals, I used to, I got to the point that I, um, I got tired of dealing with my seatmates and would just keep a journal. And so if it was an hour flight, you know, I could just keep a journal and write everything that happened in the previous city and give me an hour of writing and also give me an excuse to not have to engage the person <laughs> next to me, you know, which was always nice. Today people put headphones on. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, years, years ago, I'll tell you, I was going cross country. I think it was New Jersey to L.A. So it was that's a long, long flight nonstop. So I remember when I got on the plane, there was a guy sitting in my seat and he was heavily engaged in a conversation with the guy next to him and um, it was three seats across and so uh, I sit down and actually I had the middle seat and uh, his wife was very plain she wasn't Muslim but she had like this headgear on and just very almost like a, uh, a Quaker type type look to her and then this guy next to me her husband was sitting on the other on the aisle seat and he was talking, he was hard into religion, you know, and he was talking about, you know, if I've been saved and all this. And I said, listen, man, I said, no offense, I says, but when they fire up the engines, I'm going to break this open and I just got some writing I need to do. And he goes, oh, okay, all right. So Hail Satan. I let, <laughs> I let him say his piece until the engines fired up. And then, uh, you know, I open up my journal and I write and he keeps interrupting me, asking me. He he goes. Have you been? Have you been saved? And and I said, Listen, man, we're not. We're not going to do this. <laughs> not on here. We're not. And uh, he goes. He goes. Well, I had a sin that I was. I was saved from. And uh, he goes. It, it was really destroying my family. And and he kept on with this particular sin. And he he was alluding to it, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. So you know, we're twenty minutes into the flight. And I said, listen, I said, it's apparent you want me to ask you yeah. what it is <laughs> because you won't stop with it. So let's go ahead. Get it out of your system. Yeah. Cleanse yourself. Tell me about it. And then let's let's be done with it. Uh, can, can we do that? Because this was, I think it was four and a half hours, whatever it is. I mean, it's a good, a bit of time we're about to spend together. Yeah, no shit. So he goes, his voice, right now we're dead center of the plane. His voice starts to raise. And he goes, you really want to know? You want to know what's what I was saved from? He goes, I used to masturbate nonstop. He goes, I would masturbate <laughs> at work, at school, at church. He goes, my wife was finding my semen all over the house. He goes, I was shooting it on dogs, on cats, on kitchen counters, on steering wheels. What? And Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah, this dude was out of control. It reminded me of that scene on Forrest Gump where the guy's talking about all the different ways to cook shrimp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But with a little more passion. <laughs> right. Oh, and his voice is raising, and he is going on and on and on about all these places this dude is sprayed. And and I turned to his wife to get some... I used to have a shoebox con- underneath my bed I used to keep it in. Yeah. Well, I, I turned to his wife for some support to uh, stop this, and all she did was go, oh, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, there was cum everywhere. And I was like, Jesus, lady. Damn. Yeah. So he kept on and on and on, and people... In front of us and behind us, you you can see them laughing and they're in shock. And I was just Thanking mortified God that they weren't sitting next to <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he kept on and on. Every time he would remember a new place <laughs> that he'd shot his load, he would he would bring it up again. He go, oh, I forgot, I forgot. Uh, I mean, walking into a job interview, I remember I went into the bathroom there and I knocked one out real quick. I was just so nervous, I'd pull one off real quick, and it was just constant jerking Man. off with this guy so i hit the flight attendant call button <laughs> and i never come over <laughs> and i go i gotta change seats <laughs> And she goes, she goes, what's wrong? I go, I can't say it. This is too dear, man. This dude, too much. And and he goes on, and he hits me with about 
two or three more while she's standing there. Oh yeah, and then I came in a cup of coffee before and all this shit. And and she, just, what is she doing? Like she's standing there. She was in shock. Yeah. But everybody's laughing <laughs> around us. This storm of laughter going around the middle of the plane. Oh, I would be too. And she goes, she goes, sir. There's no empty seat. She goes, I'm afraid you have to stay there. And I go, damn, are you shitting me? You know, for four hours, I got to listen to this. Dude, I would have taken the longest shit recorded oh, history because God. I've been back there. My legs would have went to sleep sitting on that fucking toilet in that bathroom. It was, it was unreal. I mean, it was, this dude had sprayed more <laughs> semen and it was just nonstop shooting everywhere, everywhere. Damn. Yeah. So did he talk about it for the whole flight? It will, Did and he every time stop? he would remember a new, he, oh, he was okay. hot and heavy for, it seemed like 15 minutes, you know, just boom, 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 boom all the places, you know, that he, he'd, he'd spray. He says it was just exciting to come in, on a new spot that he hadn't shot before. It sounded like he still wanted to do it. If, right, he, right. if he was telling the truth, it sounded like <laughs> he was just, excited yeah, about he was it, still man. craving yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, he told me it's an everyday struggle for him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he was wanting he was shoot wanting, one on me yeah. nah, hell no 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 he told me he had conquered that demon you know and that's and i was like jesus well good but no and it was Sounds just like you're still grappling with it buddy oh yeah yeah so it was it was wild wild so that is, that is pretty good well yeah. i mean traveling is a crazy thing you know yeah you know luckily like i think joe said earlier you know most people wear their headphones now so you don't have to it's yeah. even if you don't have anything going it's almost like the do not mess with me sign yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what i'm saying you stick the headbuds in and unless and if they if they start tapping you on the shoulder at that point then you know hey, you're, you're you're in a rough hey man yeah you're, yeah you're in a rough uh you're in a rough spot yeah well yeah. actually after Waving that your hand in front of you hey buddy right. <laughs> actually i ended up buying those bose sound canceling headphones after that oh really so i wore those while i i wrote so that was that was too much that so. is well what i mean i'm trying to visualize what this guy looked like he's just your plain jane middle-aged guy yeah just an average build middle age um and it was they lived in montana oh, i remember yeah. that um it's a weird religion right there yeah, a weird religion. No, it's that's Utah. It's Utah's Utah. got the got the weird. Yeah, you got to watch out for them for sure. So. <laughs> Utah's got some <laughs> some weird things, some sex and stuff going on over you there. You don't ever hear anything about Montana. Yeah, no. you don't really. No, I don't know. I don't know what the religion was. It was, I think, it was real small, but um, they were hard into it, man. In Utah, like the. Um, the religious mecca, like they have a lot. I that was Mormons. Well, there are there's a lot of Mormons in Utah, but I think they're not like the like the best state to go if you want to do your own religious thing and kind of. They usually don't fuck with you too much, no matter what you're into. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I would think any. I would think North Dakota would <laughs> be a good place anywhere. There's not a large population. Yeah, a lot you know. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh but, man. Well, I mean, at least you're not like these guys traveling up through Central America to. Walk for how many months they're saying the caravan's walking? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you this. So I know that last I heard over the weekend they were in Oaxaca, which is southern Mexico. Mm-hmm. It's um, you have Guatemala, and then Chiapas, which they were in, and then Oaxaca after that. So they're way down low, and I know that they're they're coming north. Well, somebody did the map and like <clears throat> the amount of, amount of time it takes to walk that thing if you do 20 something miles a day which is a good bit of walking you know yeah, sustaining that for very long yeah they they said especially with no food and water i mean you heard and with children yeah you know yeah hell so they were um they were uh somebody i can't remember how many months they estimated my estimate let me do the estimated well but the thing is is they're in southern mexico it's not like they're knocking on the border you know i mean they're a long ways away and that's and it's it's i've been down there it's not the best walking conditions it's going to be a lot of dirt roads and and tough terrain yeah 100 degrees yeah 100 degrees plus temperatures now i will say this that actually they showed on the news over the weekend that they were taking groups of them and putting them in the backs of trucks, mm-hmm. police trucks, and and helping them get north, driving them north. Yeah, they don't want to deal with that shit. They yeah. want to get them. Get they them were up. torn between 
whether or not to keep them from going up there or humanitarian efforts? Well, there was something there. Let me pull this back up. They were saying that Mexico was torn on what they want to do. Uh, Pittsburgh, Michigan, migrant caravan. Mexico torn between stopping and aiding migrant caravan. Um, this is on, pull this up. It's on the local news. Not the local news, excuse me. Mexico torn between stopping, aiding migrant caravan. But I mean, even though that they're really far south, if if the and the numbers vary, is it seven thousand? Is it ten thousand? But you're talking about thousands of them. You better start preparing now for what you're going to do. What's your plan going to be? And I think they are. From coming I over, believe Trump. You know? Trump is. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt that uh, he's not going to be caught off guard. So, but I think what they're concerned about is they said that number could get up to as much as twenty thousand. Which would be an astronomical number to yeah. try and what manage. Was, where'd you say they were at? You Oaxaca. Said, Oaxaca. I'm trying <clears throat> to look is, at the I map. I think it's O A X is how it's spelled. O A X. Yeah, is how you spell wow. it. Uh. And that says Oaxaca. You see it? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh. You're you're just south of Ver- Veracruz. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, that's a. You're still a long ass damn way. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so I've been to Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Tabasco. If you see those three down there, yeah, yeah, and that's that is that's a long walk, son. What you say? Yeah. I mean, and they're and they're like trying to go to San Diego's, which is weird. I, or the, really? Yeah. Somebody said something about they're trying to make it to Tijuana. You know, and I'm um, they had one or two places, and I thought if San Diego would make would double their yeah, I mean, or if like you that. were if you were getting down in I can't remember for South Diego, South Texas. Somewhere. That would that have to cut off a month, you know, of your walking. <clears throat> huh? I uh, didn't know that um, they were trying to go to San Diego. I, yeah. Do you think that's because a uh, more progressive state, as far as if they could get into California? Yeah. And that's, I mean, and yeah. damn. Either way, man, that's a that's a that's a walk. Who are you tell? I couldn't imagine. But you know, I think about. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> And it sucks. I mean, one way or another, I, you know, I'm torn on on how I feel about it between between whether right or wrong and different, you know. But you have to, you know, you don't ever want to see somebody starve or die, whatever that good stuff. But you have to remember if you keep, you know, bringing people into your home per se, eventually you're going to run out of the um, resources resources to to take care of them. And everybody's like, well, they can work if they get here. And, the, yeah, they may. I mean, our economy's pretty strong right now. Um, but still, you know, there is that time frame of, of, of getting them settled in, getting work. If, if they, But at what point do you just... You can't save the whole world. Yes. And they may be in uh, really dire situations. And who knows who's to say that we didn't help cause it. I don't know. We mm-hmm. always have stuff going on. Especially in Central America. Overseas and mm-hmm. Central America, especially for war on drugs or whatever. But you can't save the whole world. And at some point, it's a matter of resources. And even if it's not a matter of resources, there's a reason why they had legal immigration. Disease is one of them. I mean, if mm-hmm. I can't walk across the border with an orange because i got to worry about disease, you got 11 million Petri dishes that just walked across the border with no... Uh, you know, no vaccinations. vaccinations and right. Everybody's like, "Oh, you're gonna have all your vaccinations." Okay, oh, but there's no doubt. What about the 11 million people that just traipsed across the border? And well, it's when you look at in, if you you switch over to Europe, you know, when you have a lot of people from North Africa getting ferried across the Med and just dumped onto the beaches of Italy and bumped, dumped mm-hmm. on the beaches of all the different places. And they're just walking through the streets, raising hell, and people are having to hide in their houses. And that's also a reason for legal immigration, because assimilation. Mm-hmm. They they would help them learn our beliefs the way we work. Mm-hmm. You don't just come in like you own the joint. and Yeah, not even religious belief, just the way of life. You're yeah. just I'm not basic... talking about religion. Yeah, just culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah how we do things. How yeah. about speaking the language first off? Yeah. You know? Well, the problem with that statement is we don't officially have a language which is fucked up but you could I, say we don't have official language but you I mean, can i mean i agree with what yeah. you're saying you know we, we speak english right. but but the argument 
is well you don't have an official language you know whatever and, and all that good jazz and yeah well it's because america's supposed to be a melting pot you know but i think we understand that english is the predominant language though. oh absolutely yeah. you know but you know you leave it up to multiple people they're they want to change that see i had know? a friend of mine that was from mexico and he said at home we speak spanish outside the house it's english Oh, when so, he was here. Yeah, he from... wanted everybody to, to learn Spanish mm-hmm. in his family. And then he helped them all become legal. Right. And then, uh, but outside the house, they spoke English. In hmm. the house, it was Spanish. Hmm. What well, was it early 80s that in Miami they had to house a lot of the Cuban refugees and stuff like that? Well, they had the uh, Mariana boat lift. Where yeah. all the Cubans came in? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's right. And But they did something. I remember... You know, obviously, I was very young, didn't really know. And, of course, speed of information is different, you know, back then than it is now. But if you go back, and it's like they were having to set up basically tent cities because mm-hmm. they had so many, mm-hmm. you know, they come that that came over. And they have to vet them and have to go through all that stuff. And Yeah. So what that was, that was actually what the, the basis of the movie Scarface right. was actually from that right, right there. Right, right, right. So it was... <clears throat> a, uh, Castro just dumped a lot of his um, prisoners in there, emptied out their prisons and threw them in there, you know, and along with regular civilians mm-hmm. and was just throwing them over to America. But I remember I was actually in Miami uh, visiting family when all that was going on. Really? And there was riots and, and it was it was a rough time down there. They were burning cars and everything down in the streets. Yeah. So it was it was wild. It was a wild time. So you really know what I'm kinda of getting at, you know, as far as people coming in and if you you know if they're if you're lost and I'm not saying they will do this, but I'm saying the the uh, availability to do this is very easy. Is you know, you got you know they're only talking about seven thousand people seven that's a lot of people man it's a lot of people so you 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 get seven thousand people to walk down the street right here uh the local police department is not going to be able to help you much (laughs) if they if they decide to get a little loose you know what i'm saying and crush windows i mean hell we can't even stop these antifa guys from busting windows on these riots in different cities we can't stop a sports you know fanatic from after the game yeah after the police cars over and burning yeah, so yeah, can you imagine down. you had 7,000 deciding they want to just come in and, you know. That's a right? ton. That's yeah. a ton of bodies, man. Yeah. And then, and then national security, national security, they got to they gotta know everything about you and be, you know, all everything you do, all seeing eye, and, 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 and it's all in your security and your safety. But everything God help you- anybody that wants to secure the border because I can guarantee you if, if I can think up, uh, multiple scenarios of what I could do to to get who across the border with what items. It's already been thought of. So oh yeah, if our border's not secure. I mean, yeah, I hate to throw the word terrorism around because, but I mean, that it could easily be done easily. Absolutely. Well, like you said, you know what you have to do go through now just to go on an airplane. What you know what they're doing to your phones, what they're yeah. doing this and that. Take your clothes off and let me molest you and <laughs> let me bust up your colostomy bag and let me. You know, terrorize your kids to the point where they're screaming, they don't know what's happening, and you can't go to their aid to help them, or you're going to go to jail. Yeah. But let me let, you know, thousands, millions across mm-hmm. the border. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And who knows what kind of criminal background they have or what their intentions are, because we don't. Yeah. And the thing about it is, it's not just, I think somebody else mentioned this, I don't know who it was, it might have been you, I can't remember. But, you know, what a perfect opportunity if you are from a legit terrorist cell. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh. We got seven thousand people walking to the border. Let's just slip five guys in there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And 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 there's a comedian. There's an actual comedian's got a, a Netflix special <laughs> on right now. And uh, Mo, somebody I can't remember. His, I can't remember his last name, but I just watched it the other day, just out of curiosity. He's Muslim. His name's Muhammad, and he's goes by Mo or whatever. And he was talking about how. They came over from um, uh, Kuwait and they're refugees over thing. And he up in Houston, which Houston must be the fucking town of the world. I'm going to fucking Houston because Dave's story is between Houston, right? So, so this Mo guy's on on his Netflix special. He's a comedian. He's talking about it and he's he starts laughing. He said, "Yeah." He goes, "Man, I walked down the street and he goes, you know, the Mexican gangs would think I was Mexican and the black gangs would think I was Mexican." And he says, so the black gangs and the Mexican gangs were, were having this whole big beef war, right? So he said, you know, he walked down through there, 
And he goes, but I could speak, you know, he started learning Spanish pretty quick. I guess the guy was pretty clean. And the Mex- Mexican guys were like, hey, man, you walk by us all the time. You don't ever talk to us. You don't ever think. And it's like, his voice is like super British. He's like, you know, he's, you know, in, I guess in Kuwait, there was a lot of British influence, at, you know, uh-huh. over the years or whatever. And he went to a private school when he was in Kuwait and all that stuff. So he is that very, very English talk when he wanted to. And he's like, and so they're like, you know, we're your family, you know, for me, yeah, yeah, you won't do nothing, have nothing to do with us. And he, he said he just hit him with a white voice. And just, <laughs> but my name is Mohammed. And they were like, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. And then, then the black guys tried to get on him because they thought he was Mexican. And he's like, but my name is Mohammed. Yeah. And they were like, oh, assalamu alaikum, brother. <laughs> he was just playing the whole thing, you know, back and forth. He's, he's, he was having to play both sides. Right. But I said that joke because it was funny is you never know just because somebody looks like somebody you don't know if that what their national descent is oh yeah. absolutely I mean, hell you got a hundred people walking in 10 15 20 of them are from the middle east you'd never know right right never know well i was i did martial arts with a guy who's a doctor and uh, this is kind of really not apples to apples but there's a couple of hispanic guys that were started training with us and they spoke fucking next to no english it was really hard to to work with them and they wanted to learn the martial art and stuff and and uh they were going through the thing and the guy that was instructing he's trying to tell them best he can and all of a sudden we hear in beautiful spanish from behind us la, 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 you know whatever and we're all looking around and we don't see no other spanish people and we're all confused as fuck and then all of a sudden we see this guy that's a doctor start speaking spanish again to him and he's as white as white you could ever. I mean, you look at this guy. He, look, I mean, he is white. Mm-hmm. You know, he look, New England white. Like he was like, you know, never th- thought he'd been anywhere. And uh, his name was John, Doctor John. And I remember asking him, I said, "Damn man, you speak really good Spanish." He goes, "Yeah." When he goes, his dad was a doctor also, and his dad took him down there and um, to Central America, Mexico, wherever. And they stayed there a big chunk of his childhood. Mm-hmm. So he spoke beautiful Spanish. And uh, and I said, yeah, I just never. He goes, he goes, he goes, you'd be surprised how many blonde Spanish people there are. Like, that look. He goes, you look at them and you wouldn't know that they were of Spanish descent. You mm-hmm. know, because of, you know, people from Europe coming into Mexico and settling. And then, you know, you have a Mexican mom and a, a European dad or whatever. And then, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, they... So you don't really know who's coming. All that to be said, you don't really know who's coming across the border sometimes. You can't just say, oh, there's a white guy. Let white guy through. Mm. You know, he, he may not be from Mexico. He may be from Middle East. He may be from whatever. You don't know. But I think it goes deeper than even being a white guy because, I mean, just look. I mean, it is it is what is your intent of your heart, you know? You looked just yesterday. They had the shooting in Philadelphia. What was that about? I'm glad you brought that up. Somebody else asked me about that. Uh, I... You know, was that the I, guy I, that I hate all Jews, all Jews must die? Yeah, something like that. I didn't watch a lot. You know, I had a lot going on yesterday, but it was basically, it was... Uh, Levin killed. Yeah, yes. kind of a... Synagogue shooting. Yeah. Kind of a hater of, of Jewish people, so he went to that synagogue. They were blessing a baby or doing something with a baby in there. Uh, oh, the it, communion? Uh, the, is it communion? What is it? Uh, was it called? Is, I don't, uh, Catholic. Yeah, uh, I don't know what they do. It something about giving them a name or, or something like that. But anyways, he went in during that time and shot the place up on a Saturday. Oh, probably it's one of your most relaxed moments in your life. Right. Your guard's way down. Yep, yep, you yep. You know, something you would never think about. Right. So, so I mean, it goes deeper than 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 race and, and your location of the country you come from. It is the intent of one's heart. So, I think it's so important to vet everybody that comes in from wherever it is right and so you can't just say well you from mexico or iran or or whatever everybody should be vetted properly because it could have been that guy could have been coming across the border as well yeah everybody should be vetted but anybody could come across that border right now you know because nobody's well, and I think that's what Trump is trying to supposed to be, you know, a stop. F- offended that they would try to stop anybody from entering the country. Well, yeah, and I don't like the whole, uh, you know, they make the joke, and it's a, it's a good joke, it's a funny joke. You can build a border wall if you want to, because me and my family flew in. Well, yeah, you're just basically saying, okay, you flew in, you didn't get vetted, vetted, and you outstayed your visa. 
you're still fucking you're committing the crime right you know it doesn't matter if you walk across fly in take a boat whatever you do you know they they use that multiple. and then again with the resources what does that do for the legal immigrants that came here and went through the process to do it and now there's less jobs for them mm. because now people want to pay pennies or nothing to those that are illegal because they know they can get away with it, and the illegals aren't going to bitch about it. Right, and that's the, and that's the fucking and thing about it. Starts too. driving down wages of, let's say, a construction job that used to be worth this amount of money, and now it's worth less because I know I can pull up to the mm -hmm. the corner store and and pick up ten or twenty illegals and pay mm -hmm. them, you know, and they're not going to say anything. money, and they're not going right. to say anything. Right, right, yeah. right. And that, that's some dirty shit, man. I mean, I'm all about you know doing the best you can for your business, but if if you're one of those assholes that just tries to take advantage of somebody because that you know they can't complain you know fuck those fuck those guys you know i'm with saying? you i'm totally with you yeah it's like jesus christ man that guy busts his ass and you're gonna pay him not even minimum wage right and then and then maybe even fuck him a little bit on his check <coughs> and too, that did think? happen because uh once i graduated college i didn't have my ei t yet and so i had trouble finding the job that i wanted so i got a construction job on site on campus as a welder and after I got done catching them back up, then I went to just a regular laborer. And I'm working with the, the uh, Hispanics there. And they're like, hey, man, you need to uh, keep track of your hours. I'm like, what do you mean? They keep track of hours. He's like, yeah, but what happens is, let's say you worked 50 hours. Sometimes they only try to pay you for 44 hours, 45 hours. And you need to keep track of it because otherwise they're going to short you. And I was like, nah. And eventually they did. They mm -hmm. did. So they were doing all of them, but eventually they tried it on me too. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, of course I'm going to say something because I'm not illegal. But if they were to, you know, stir up the waters, who's to say, well, you know what? Go find yourself another job. I'm going to find me somebody else that, yeah. right. that'll, that'll eat shit. So what you know? did when you went in there? I shut the job site down until they paid me cash money for what they owed me. <laughs> well, it sounded like you were I working take, for a bunch of dirt I take, bags. I take... Oh my money that i bust my ass for seriously yeah. so yeah things are going to get ugly if you try to fuck me out of something we're shutting it down yeah. yeah no more work today <laughs> everybody's like who the fuck's this guy <laughs> what i said when i went in the job trailer <gasps> uh, so, tell them about it tell them fucking bam uh, no more yeah but then after that they didn't try it again and i still work for them well i think they but just if you're illegal you. Yeah, you know. you, you're not going to have the the Joe balls to go in yeah. there and, and, and raise And if you hell. do, then you're risking losing your job. Right. Yeah. But my point is... They must have loved my you. My point is, <laughs> is you can drive down wages because now I don't have to pay as much because, you know, I hear that bullshit. Well, they're just doing jobs that Americans don't want. No, that's bullshit, okay? If you paid the money that that job was worth, people would do the fucking job. Don't tell me that nobody would want to pick fruit or nobody would want to go rogue corn or nobody would want to go do roofing if you paid what the job was worth people would do it mm. and 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 to the point where even high schoolers would do, i mean i remember when i was a kid in iowa we went and, and rogued corn you, you go out there and you cut down the rogue stocks that weren't supposed to be growing it probably had something to do with genetics or whatever but i mean that wasn't fun work and we didn't get paid much but we went and did it so don't tell me that americans won't do it they will do it if you pay what it's worth, but if corporations want to bring in a flood of millions of illegal immigrants, and, and who's to say that they aren't helping push that issue? Right. Because they do have lobbyists that create laws that benefit them and not us. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Who's to say that they're not helping push that issue so they can get a flood of cheap labor in so that way they can make even more profits? Because after the economy tanked and they learned that they could squeeze way more work out of us, Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you don't like it? Well, there's fucking hundred people lined up that are ready to take your job right now. Yeah, you know? and I think that I think that contributed to, to a lot of the Great profit. Depression too. You know, is when when we had the Great Depression and there's so many people out of work, what jobs were had? People, were, the higher ups were like, well, we can literally figure out what we want to pay, and these motherfuckers will fight each other to death mm -hmm. just to get enough to to feed their family. And that's why wages haven't gone up relative to previous history uh, in, in, in the past 10 years. Right. You know, they, they're creeping up, but they're not where they should be from, from what I'm hearing. Anyway. Right. Well, you know, when you start, I mean, I don't know what those, um, what do you call it? Not interest calculators, but the, uh, 
wage calculators where you inflation inflation calculators yeah if you do the inflation what what you got paid seven years ago versus here versus today and it's like yeah shit man that three percent didn't didn't sound near as good it doesn't sound near as good as it did you know when i got it i mean because in your head you think man i'm making this much money i must be making a lot of money well let me check inflation calculator from you know 10 15 years ago Fuck! I'm not really not making that that great of money. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm making about what I was making. You know. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yep. I'm not, I'm not making anything different. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But but your your family came across and they did the right thing. They prospered and but they came across and did the whole, you know, they did the whole went through the whole shebang, right? Right. And so that was the thing. So my mother came over from Cuba when she was about 14, and. Um, when the way they did it was is when Castro first came into power, her father told it was she's a single uh, child, so it was her two parents sitting and my mother, and my father got the family together there in Havana, and said uh, and told my mother said listen we have decided to move to America, said that we don't have a good feeling about this guy that just came into power, Man. and we want to leave now, and so the way the story is is that. Everybody got one suitcase, and they put whatever they wanted in there. Wow. And uh, so my grandfather had a a big, I have it in my house now, but he had this eight-foot Cuban flag. And they folded it up, and that was the first thing they packed. And then they packed what they could on top of that, you know. And so they came over on a boat. So not one suitcase each, just one suitcase. Yeah, it was one suitcase each. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that was what he put in his first. Yeah. And then packed on top of that. And, um, and then they came over on a boat and, uh, he fixed, uh, hand radios or, uh, little home radios. Uh He had a shop there in Miami and that's what he did. And that's, and my grandmother worked in an envelope factory and, uh, yeah. And they, neither of them spoke English, but they made it work, you know, and they worked hard their whole life and, and, but they did it the right way and they didn't do it the, you know, they didn't try to sneak in and do it the illegal way. However, I will tell you, so, of course, my mother had family over there, you know, as years go on, and I remember sitting at the the table as a child. I said I was a child. I was, oh, probably 18, 19, and uh, we're sitting around eating dinner, and the phone rings, and my dad goes, hey, it's for you, meaning my mother, and she takes it, and she starts to cry. And hangs up. And she says that her family is literally... Now, this was years, years ago. She says, but they are literally starving over there because of the... You get a portion. You stand in line and you get so much meat, so much rice, so much bread uh, weekly. And she says they're starving. And so what my mother would do is, is she would send them... She'd buy a pair of shoes, cheap shoes, and she would separate them and put one... Mail one shoe at a time because if you mail two... They'd steal them. They'll open up your package and they'll steal them. Smart. So the trick is send one at a time, no take the shit. sole out, and then put cash underneath the sole, and then send it to them. Mail, mail one shoe. And uh, that's how they used to send money to her family so that they could stay fed. But they that's have, amazing. Yeah. That's fucked up. Man. But, yeah. But they have since... Uh, filed the proper paperwork and actually and now they're living in Miami and I'll tell you the incredible thing is so it was my mother's cousin that used to always call us so she has a daughter that is 25 or so her daughter has come over went to the college there and uh, they all worked um, the her two parents and then their 25 year old daughter they all worked they all pitched in they all lived in this basically it was like a little shed in the back of someone's house and they saved their money and they were working insane hours and the daughter went to school and she just graduated mm. and she's now a nurse down in miami oh good for there. her and it's, it's just it really is an incredible story yeah. of you can do it the right way yeah. and the thing is that so many people want an immediate response you know well, the thing is you can't blame them because they're looking for opportunity and previous administration allowed that opportunity opportunity to happen okay but you know that eventually some down some day down the road there might be consequences for those actions uh and oh i've been here for you know 20 years and now i'm supposed to well i mean you've had 20 years yeah yeah you had 20 years to do something about it or right or you know 
it's not my fault that that this I hate it for you. I hate that you had conditions to where you had to to do this, but and and I don't blame them for for wanting to, if if you make it easy for them to do it. I can't blame somebody for for taking opportunity, and I would too. And I'd risk it all, you know, and and if you had a good run, you had a good <laughs> run. At least I had some good years. Yeah. But I mean, but if you're escaping abuse, let's say the people in Honduras, they're walking right through Mexico, you know. Yeah. And so they can't seek asylum there. Well, uh, well, I will. I will give this whether this is true or not. Uh, Mexico did say they made. Which they're this, having problems with yeah. the cartel, also. Yeah. So they don't. Well, I don't know fig- if they're any less dangerous. They're than about to legalize from. marijuana. Really? Yep. Mexico is. I yep. Know that. They're going to follow. Um, Canada. They're, they're follow Canada Canada's Canada. rule. Uh, I'll have to dig up the uh, the story I was reading on that, but I, I right, wrong, or indifferent, whatever your whatever your thought patterns on it is, but. If you legalize that stuff and people can grow it down there as a, a regular cash crop and, and, and cut out some mm-hmm. cut out some of the corruption the best thing. There's always gonna be corruption. I mean but, you know, that that I think that'll cut down some of the violence, some of the things because people won't be forced to do things that they don't want to do. If they wanna work on a pot like farm smoke and, fake uh, marijuana end up getting sick, you know, because <laughs> they can't get the real shit because it's fucking illegal. No. Yeah. Well, I will say that, I mean, I've spent time in Mexico, and the corruption down there is pretty incredible. I mean, hell, we got pulled over. I wasn't driving. I was with another guy. We got pulled over, and uh, without batting an eye, he pulls his license out, hands it to the cop, and they keep down there, they all have paper clips on their license, and it was like the equivalent of $20 tucked on the back. So when he handed him his license with that on there... The cop came, took his license, went back to his car, came back. He said, "Okay, you're good." Boom, that easy. Just Gone. gotta pay your tax. You gotta That's pay it. Your tax. But since, but again, though, agree or disagree with me, the more people do that, the easier it is to corrupt a cop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If but they don't pay the cops anything, and I'm not don't. saying it's they, right. No, no, no. But what I'm that's what I'm saying. It's like, but but it's like it's almost like a, an understood now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that's why the cops get all crazy. It's like, oh, well, this motherfucker didn't give me my, my token. Mm-hmm. You know, if it got to the point where where things were legit and cops could make a, a livable wage and, mm-hmm. and, and, and then motherfuckers didn't just roll over instantly, mm-hmm. yeah, there's going to be people that have to take a beating, you know, whatever, until you get rid of that kind of stuff. But, you know, I can tell you right now, if a cop in this area is like, uh, it's going to cost you X amount of money, I said, well, I'll see you in fucking court. Well, mm-hmm. you might have to. You know, I might have to take a little lump to to make it to jail, but you know, sometimes you just got to take a beating. Yeah. You know. Yep. If 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 I come up to you and every time every time I fuck with you, Dave, and you had to give me twenty bucks, well, <laughs> about that third time, I'm gonna start expecting it. You know, Which what I'm saying? we have our own corruption, and it's easy to say something like that for us because, but the level of corruption that sh- that they are in, it may not be as easy to, to right. Because you may not just be taking a beating; you may be Going well, to fucking prison. And yeah, that's a higher level, shit, though. That know, that's yeah. that's higher level. I'm just talking about. I'm just talking about on your day to day. Yeah. You know, I don't have to worry about. And this is a great thing about this country. I I don't have to worry about a cop hitting me up for cash. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about it. Now I might have a cop fuck with me a little bit. Like if he pulls me over, I had that cop. I told this story. I got pulled over. I guess it was about a month or so, maybe two months ago. I hadn't been pulled over in a while, but I was driving down the roads late at night, got off the interstate. I pull up, and uh, he got me, man. He was in a good spot. And I was doing close to 10 over, and he hit his lights. I was like, ah, fuck. You know, he got me. So I pull over, and uh, I always have all my stuff together, you know, my license, my insurance, my registration, all that good stuff. So he comes up, and really it was almost comical because he was kind of doing shit out of order. <laughs> you know, he was like littering and littering, littering and, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I give my give him my information. He goes back, he runs it, and does whatever. And uh, he comes back and he gives me all my stuff back. He goes, "All right, Mister Bowman, let's go." Blah, blah blah. He goes, "But uh, and this is what threw me off." He goes, "Uh, before you go, I just uh, have you been drinking tonight?" And I and I. <laughs> I look, man, it's like I turn sideways like a fucking demon movie. I just turn sideways and I look at this dude in such disgust. Like, are you fucking kidding me? 
all that you give me i'm this is in my head all that back and forth you give me my paperwork back and then oh one more thing have you been drinking and i look at him i said no are you kidding <laughs> and he goes well you know sometimes as we you know pull people we get we smell things and this and that and i'm like i just look at him and i'm literally look at him in the most disgust that you could look at somebody i'm like uh no <laughs> He, he was goes, just trying to hit all angles. Yeah. All, but why are you going to give me my license back? That's what I'm saying about the out of order thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I kept my mouth shut up smart. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. But I wanted to say, no, stupid. If you thought I was drinking, we would have already had this conversation. <laughs> this would have been right. like out of the beginning. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. But my facial expressions, again, must have been wonderful because he looked at me like, uh-oh. Yeah, you know, because he's like, "Oh, I, I may have just fucked up this guy more," <laughs> and it's just like, uh, "No," yeah. and he's just like, "Uh, uh all right, you have a good night, and blah blah." You know, come I had all my shit back. I'm like, "Yeah, what the fuck's wrong with you?" But again, I don't have to worry about him dragging me out of the car, hit me with a damn billy club, and taking my wallet and leave me on the side of the road for dead either. Right. You know, right. Uh, now when you get to the judge level you might have to worry about him sending you to prison for 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 some bullshit but uh but yeah. just on my day-to-day right i don't worry about that that kind of shit yeah yeah well i mean we're very fortunate uh here and and again i mean and i understand people's plight to want to come here right. but i mean at the same time uh, it is a country of rules and laws well, you know I mean, and it's besides that everybody's, you know, well, what about the people? You got to think about the people. Okay, fine. You live in Birmingham. You got a nice house. How many bedrooms have you got? You don't need all those bedrooms. How many hobos could you take in? Can you take in 10 hobos off the street here from Birmingham? Is hobos. That, can, you, can you do hobos. that? <laughs> Homeless get, people. Yeah, yeah. You know? I know what they are. Yeah, just yeah, nobody yeah. uses that can word. You, okay, you, can, you can take in 10. Can, yeah, yeah. can you take in 20 homeless people? Yeah. Can you do that? At what point? That you keep taking in people to where, okay, now the toilet's clogged up. Okay, now we're out of food. Okay, now the the house is destroyed. Well, they now did people that. people are shitting in the fucking living room floor. Yeah. I mean, and that's just on a micro scale. We can't, you, you can't take in the whole world. Because well, eventually, that's what you become if, if you do mm-hmm. that. Well, they did that in Europe. They did that in, I think it was Switzerland. Is Switzerland if, is out of control, yeah. dude. Dude, what it sounds they like. come in there, if you had an apartment... You had a two-bedroom apartment and you were a single person. They made you move out of that fucking apartment and go find another place to live, and they gave it to refugees. And that's what? the thing about that's the thing about socialism. Everybody's like, "Oh, well, to make things more fair, well, wealth, what you know, equal to wealth, you know, shifted around." Uh, yeah, we need socialism. Well, guess what? Those super mega rich people are aren't stupid. They know how to park their money in certain places, mm-hmm. and if it was to get to that point here. All the rich people are hauling ass with yeah. their money. So the only people that that money is going to get redistributed is you and me. Mm-hmm. And that's when they're going to say, you know what? You got a three-bedroom house. You only need one of them. I'm moving two families in. That's crazy. And that's how real socialism would end up happening. Well, Just that's, like what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, you know, you're one person. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to find. Well, let's see. Migration, asylum, euro, how you I'm trying to figure out if it was Switzerland. I don't want to tell a lie. This bad, but yeah, it was like um, splitting seven charts. Which country is America? I want to say it was Sweden. I may have told a lie. I'll look it up. Y'all keep me hammering. But uh, but no, it was it was like weird shit, and, they, and people were like losing their minds. You know, they they were brought in, and they're like, "Well, we got to house these people." And, and there was, again, you have to be careful about news. You don't know what's true, what's not. Um, uh, Regardless, if, if they wanted to do socialism, they ain't taking it from the rich people. The rich people pay people to keep that shit from happening. Yeah. So it's, Sweden is, I think you were thinking of Sweden because I follow someone on Twitter that's from Sweden. And that's what they talk about is how it is just completely spiraled out of control over there. Completely. Yeah, that's, uh, and I don't know if these houses were subsidized apartments for these people or not by the government. And they're like, well, we're subsidizing you, so you got to move them and put these people in there. I don't know what the, the true meat of it is, but right. either way, this person's living in an apartment and you get a fucking knock-knock on the door 
and hey bitch you gotta move we're gonna stick these fuckers in there good luck you know so that's wild. what the fuck i've never heard that that we're is being overwhelmed with people that have no intentions of ever integrating into the population properly with everybody else so. right well in and having to set up and i know in europe they were doing this uh having to set up sc- basically split the schools up so that they can um because the boys aren't supposed to be with the girls and you know you know middle east you know they they were having a lot of problems with female teachers teaching boys mm. teaching their sons and like these people are asylum seekers okay yeah. they've they've quote unquote traveled however far from middle east north africa to Europe, and it's like, and then they demand, well, you can't yeah. teach my son, you're a woman. You know, they have those stories, and so they have to figure out how to, how how to handle it. the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, that. I mean, you, you came here. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go there, you came no, here. No, let me change how I think. And that's, yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying, you know, you, when you have that major influx of people, and then your, your town and city and state leaders and whatever like that, well, we got to make them comfortable. Why do we have to make them comfortable? Because we don't want to offend anybody. Mm. So I'm, I'm sure your feelings. parents weren't offended when when they had the opportunity to get a job, and you know, they were grateful for any little thing they had. You know, I mean, and it was it's just what you see now is just it's absolutely incredible. But for my my grandfather just to have the opportunity to come here and work on a damn radio he was extremely grateful you yeah, know happy. hell yes and made it work and yeah. hustled it and he pulled together with other people other cubans in a community and they made it work mm. you know well, the, well obviously the cuban the cuban culture is huge down in south florida now because of that you know and and they are i mean yeah. it's just but in back in that day there was very few yeah. very very few you yeah. know and and th- they were amongst the the start you know of those coming over right and for whatever reason he just had that foresight you know that get the hell out it's fucking awesome that he did yeah yeah Yeah, because it could have went really different oh they'd they'd be the one starving along with the rest of their family you know and nobody sending them a shoe with money in it you're damn straight yeah my little buddy dave might not even be here today because that's right that's right (laughs) hell i might be running around on a barefoot on dirt road cuban dirt roads that's right (laughs) you would have glory hole stories or nothing (laughs) Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you just l- last thing. So, uh, a funny story that my mother told me from Cuba was: so she used to, as a little girl, she used to. I don't know if you're seen in those third world countries where the kids would slap a bicycle rim, yeah, and, with and, a stick, yeah, with a stick, yeah, and go down. So she did that as a little girl, and uh, so she you're just rolling the bicycle wheel with the. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you just, just keep it. That's the kids' yeah. game way back then. Yeah, when you didn't have internet. Right. <laughs> so, um, she one night, you know, she came home, and uh, my grandmother told her, she says, "Hey, it's dirty. Um, leave the stick. Leave the rim outside." And she said, "Okay." So when she came out the next morning to play with it, the rim was gone. Hell yeah! Someone stole it. Yeah. And so she all she had was a stick. And I said, "Well, what did you do?" And she said, "Well." I was grateful I had a stick, so I just waved my stick around, Damn. and that's that's what I played with. Mm. I just waved, and I thought, holy hell. I mean, you were grateful to have a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And then you think today people wouldn't give two shits about a rim and a stick, you know? Oh, absolutely. And it's the smallest thing. But if that's all you got. That's you all know? she had. Yeah, my son would look at me crazy as fuck. I'm like, what do you mean I only got a stick? Yeah. Oh, she, was, she cried, and she was upset hell that yeah. they stole the rim. But she says at least they didn't steal the My stick. stick. Yeah. I gotta go find another damn <laughs> stick. Yeah. So it's it is amazing how times and the way people think right. and what yeah. they're there's there's gratitude for things and then there's a, a sense of entitlement, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's what's what's going on here. What drives me crazy though, because you said the key word entitlement, it piss that yeah. drives me nuts. Is, you can't call me fucking illegal. You got to call me a undocumented immigrant. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fucking illegal, asshole. Fucking you don't have the right to not be called an illegal. Go right. fuck yourself. Yeah. Right. But what drives me crazy is, you know, yeah, the, a lot of these people that are migrating or whatever may have lower education. So they may have lower this and that. But, you know, this country was built on people that didn't have a lot of intelligence per se. I mean, there were smart people in there. And I, mean, I would say less educated people built this country up. Um, 
immigrants, people traveling, you know, why can't it, with with world today and the ability for information, the ability to do things, the ability, you know, it's a, just a different world. Why can't they build their countries up? Why can't they figure out there's got to be smart people down there? Why can't they figure out and say, look, uh, we need to figure out something that's either going to churn tourism or a product or something you you can't have that many people sitting around and somebody didn't have a fucking idea. I, I, I mean, I have an opinion, and it's I believe it is that the people in in charge of these countries are so many of them are probably just looking out for themselves. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be in office long. Let me do a money grab, do what I can, right, and then I'm out. You know, and then the next one's in. And he's like, well, shit, man. And how do you combat that as a regular citizen when it's so corrupt? That's right. You yeah. Know, when it's so chaotic and violent yeah. to where people are getting fucking heads chopped yeah. off. Well, right? that, I mean, Venezuela's a prime example. You know, you, they, um, there was a video out where the daughter and maybe a son, I know a daughter for sure, of one of the higher-ups in Venezuela was in Australia on the beach living it up. Hmm. And some people from, that had, I guess gotten away from venezuela or, or tied into some group they basically come out there on the thing and was shaming her on video going really? you know your your family's sending you all over the country and you're staying at this place and staying at that place and there's people starving and of course she gets up and she's trying to walk off and you know do all that stuff but it's like you said and it, and it can get that way here real quick if we're not careful mm-hmm. when you when you destroy the middle class and you got poor and you got rich mm-hmm. you know the rich become extremely rich the poor comes extremely poor, and next thing you they know, they hate you for being rich. Yeah, and they're going to hate you for being rich, and you know, and you're sending your kids all over the globe doing things, whatever. Uh, the greatest thing about this country is the middle class, and if it ever goes away, which is being eroded. Yeah, if it ever if it ever goes away, then this is just a huge third world country. Yeah, that will splinter. Yeah. Well, and I will tell you. So you hear a lot of people talk about and and just trash the rich i hear it all the time about it's not fair and 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 all this stuff and Mm -hmm. and it's maybe for some rich people but not all of them well but i asked them and it it was the last place i worked you know we used to have these conversations Mm because it was people that have come through generations of basic yeah and uh and they were just trashing people that have actually done well for themselves and i asked them i said how many poor people have given you a job and he said, well, none. I said, you're damn straight. Right. You should be grateful for people that are rich because they are the ones that keep the machine rolling. They're giving you a job. And they're mm. giving you an opportunity. Absolutely. You know? And that's, well, that's a double-edged sword. And I think that the great thing about our country is you have the opportunity to be rich. You have the opportunity. If you got the will, you got the desire, you got the intelligence, you know, if you got... A couple of those things, you don't have to be the smartest guy, but you've got desire and will. You can you can fight your way to the top. Mm-hmm. Or if you're just fucking super smart, you know you you have the ability to put out a product. Making or it awfully hard to try to get that way now with the cost of education and right. all kinds. That's of, where that's kind all of kinds of roadblocks now that are kind of making it even harder just to be middle class. Now. Yeah. Well, I think it was that way in in the first of the 1900s. Only the rich people went to college. And then after World War II, they in Korea they started doing GI bills, doing things, making it easier for lower class people to sit, go to college, send their kids to college, and so we had an uptick of availability of people to have education. Well, now it's almost like they they're turning that back around to where Jesus Christ, man! By, by the time to, you can buy three homes, by the time you get out of a damn yeah, I can't imagine college. What college and books and all that shit costs now. That's crazy. So, so it's that weird, that weird roller coaster. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And, uh, but I think everybody should have the opportunity to be. Rich. I want to be rich. If anybody can out there can help me, I would appreciate <laughs> you. You know, but it goes back to where a biggest problem is too is the entitlement spot. Our social programs create poor. You know, if 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 you if a, if somebody can say, well, why am I going to go to work and make X amount of money a month when I can make as much or maybe a little more sitting on my ass? Complacency. But, or I can yeah, have two more kids is. and get paid more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, money. Yep. Because, complacency. Because I don't have to. 
I can sit here and watch my TV. I can play on my Facebook. I can do whatever. Well, why are you going to go bust your ass? You know, Mm -hmm. but they don't see in the long run that, you know, busting their ass can get them to the next level. And then that busting their ass can get them to the next level of that. And, you know, now it's just like, well, fuck, man. I, you know, I quit school in the 10th grade and I got, I got three kids or, or, or my back's hurt. You know, my quote unquote back's hurt. My toes, my toes cracked. I can't work, you know, because we've got all these social programs and they're not being used the way they really should be used. We should have some. Yeah, we should have some. And to then, a point. And, and they're always, I'm sure they're always going to find a way to abuse them. But don't give me the bullshit about how that's what's draining the fucking country and causing us to go into fucking hemorrhaging debt. That's bullshit. <laughs> we piss away more fucking money. We would never have to pay taxes ever again if they didn't fuck, fucking piss away the money that we give them right now. Or give other countries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we give fucking billions of dollars to other countries. Probably because we're fucking with those countries and when we shouldn't be, you know, yeah. sticking our noses in other people's business. Mm, pokey fingers. I mean, because mm. uh, we got to be the fucking empire on top. Mm. But don't tell me that the social programs is what's bankrupt in the fucking country. Don't tell me social programs is why I can't get my fucking social security that I paid into when I'm older because you motherfuckers broke into the bank and stole it. Mm. For what? I love our federal you know? bank. We could have a whole conversation on our federal bank. Yeah. That's not really a federal so, entity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we should have social programs. I think I think there's people that genuinely need it and, and and there's people that will get off of it when they when they get back on their feet. Is it ever it's not it's always gonna be abused. You're always gonna find somebody's gonna abuse it. No doubt. But don't tell me that's what's bankrupt in the fucking country. That's bullshit. That's more that divide and conquer bullshit to get us fighting back and forth about black and white, rich and poor. And all this other bullshit when we should be focused on... Ten fingers versus seven. Yeah, fingers. you guys... <laughs> that, they're sorry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. And yeah. so it's, uh, it's fascinating. But we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to follow the... the uh, I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to make it. Go back full circle. I, I, something's going to happen. I just... I, I'm, they won't make it to the border, you don't I think? I think they will. I think oh. they'll make it. And the thing about it is, is when they do make it, that's going to decide how things are going to go from that point forward. Mm-hmm. If they flood and push their way through, well, what are you going to do to stop it? You yeah, start what, fucking shooting them? Yeah, that was, I, I was going to ask that question. It's going to take somebody dying, be it at the border, or be it diseases in the country, before anybody decides, okay, now maybe we need to do something. Mm-hmm. You know? But the bottom line is we should be able to secure our border and not feel bad about it, period. We shouldn't be made to fucking be shamed into securing our own fucking border. We already got fucking supposedly 10 or 11 million. There's probably more than that here. Yeah, when you when, when we send our military around the world to secure other people's borders. But we can't secure our own fucking border. Right. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I just don't know. I got a weird feeling. I got a weird feeling about a quarter, a little bit further. There, something's going to go on. I, I'm not saying the whole crew will turn around, but they'll either quit talking about it because they are going to make it, and they don't want everybody paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the government's like, look, we don't want this big fucking hoorah on TV. So what we're going to do is let's shut the cameras down. We're gonna we're gonna run them through the quietest crossing spot. Hey, no yeah, way! But the media wants yeah everybody to see that they There's, want Trump yeah. with they no way in hell. Yeah. Trump you know, is, is gonna quietly let them come in. Hell no! <laughs> hell no! I'm just gra- I'm grasping his <laughs> straws, man. I'm Trump grasping. couldn't stop it. He couldn't make it quietly come in because the whole fucking media wants this kind of shit to happen. Yeah, yeah. But I think they need but. It needs to be addressed at the hundreds or thousand mile mark before it gets to this border. Yeah, you they're know standing there at the gate talking. Yeah, yeah, that's not the time. You've got however many hundreds of miles it is from Oaxaca to here. That's the time to address it, I'm, way down there. You can have a bunch here. of Border Patrol and you could have hundreds of National Guardsmen. I mean, you can send 800 more active duty troops there. What are you going to do when they get there? What's your plan? Right, now you've got a crisis on your hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's see. why I'm saying thin it out down there, you know, and stop it. So let's see what. Uh, so from Oaxaca to El Paso, Texas, is I'd guess seven fifty is what my guess. 
Double that shit. 1,414 Jesus. miles from Oaxaca to El Paso. And if you're driving, it's 25 fucking hours. If you're walking. <laughs> Forget about it. Let's see. Uh, Months. They didn't. They didn't even give me a time. They just looked at me like I'm crazy. In the <laughs> heat with water, you know. The children yeah, even and, uh, and elderly. Four hundred and what is it? Four hundred and seventy-one hours to walk it. I mean, children. How how long can you sustain twenty miles a day? You know, a day or two. So at my last job, I had my I I tracked it on my phone. I was averaging thirteen. 13 and a half miles a day walking. And I, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. In a however many hours you work in a day. That's a ton of walking, dude. And I was going home feeling spent, you yeah. know. I could not imagine 20 hours, uh, every, or excuse me, 20 miles With every day. With the stress day. of not knowing where your water or your next meal is coming from. Yeah. What's and I could sit down. When you get there. Yeah, I could sit down. I was comfortable. I could eat when I wanted to and, and, and relax. You know, I wasn't well, damn under no sure don't, don't Damn sure don't let fucking Joe plan it out for you because you'll need some tractor trailers of supplies <laughs> to walk that shit out. <laughs> what do you mean? How <laughs> much your, your uh, Grand Canyon trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so don't let fucking Joe plan it shit out. You'll be, <laughs> God damn, you, you don't have enough back to, <laughs> to take with it. Worked out perfect. I it's, didn't over train. <laughs> Had just the right amount of food. <laughs> so it's like, that's, 20, that's 24 days. If you did 20, 20 hours, if you did 25, 20-something 20 miles. 20 miles a day. Yeah, you couldn't sustain it Yeah, for very long. Well, and they were, they were wondering if they were going to make the border on election day. And uh, Hell but, no, that's 23 yeah, days. Man. Yeah, there's, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no way. But no. if somebody that wanted to fund it that decided to send some Track. vehicles down there. Yeah. Well, they said. They could help make that happen. They could. Well, what was weird is the one guy they interviewed, I was kind of surprised that he even said it. He said they a lot of them weren't willing to get on the trains because of uh, the people were getting pulled off of trains and buses and robbed. Hmm. And like by gang, you know, just. I don't want to say I don't want to say cartels because I don't I don't know if that's what you know just just unscrupulous people you know yeah. just whatever that you want to classify them as but you know they get on these trains they're easy targets everybody knows exactly where they are where they're going to be you know and then they get yanked off and and robbed or whatever. Well, I will say this, and this is purely one man's opinion, that the hardest part of their trek will be southern Mexico. And you I can think so? Well, I can say that because I've been there. Right, right. Southern Mexico is very rural. It's very jungly. It's very harsh environment. Mm. Once you get in further central north, it's more populated, more, more city. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down there, Oaxaca, Chiapas, that's hardcore, hardcore jungle down there. Well, I'm, Tabasco. Sit, I'm sitting here looking at the map on satellite view, and I'm going to tell you what. That looks like a lot of fucking desert. And well, lot, what, yeah, uh, what, yeah. but, well, whatever. But yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Once you get into the city, you have more of an opportunity of people. Catching a ride. That's yeah. right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Public transit, whatever. Down south, that is, that's hard living down there. I just couldn't imagine, man. I, you know, I've looked at doing motorcycle rides and i've always thought fuck if i break down i'm fucked yeah but what about risking your life and maybe knowing somebody that died on that trip and make it all the way to the border and then get turned around mm-hmm. How's, how de- how defeating is that but you have to know that that is a risk you take yeah you know that right that is a good question though what do you do as mexico as the country of Mexico, what do you do at that point? Yes, you try to. Oh, as Mexico, as as the yeah, as the country of Mexico, you okay? The president drops X number of tanks and troops and whatever all down the border. Ninety percent of these fuckers are not getting across. At what point, you know, where they're not getting across, <laughs> you're now you got all these motherfuckers at the northern border just kind of sitting around. You just let them die. You you know what do you feed them? You take them back. Try to live in northern Mexico, then. That's what I'm saying. What what do you do? That's a weird. And hopefully, it's better than where they came from. Well, there's farming and stuff. I don't know, but that'd be interesting. Yeah. You just bide your time and run. Ac- you'd have to run across at uh, at. Uh, you know, if you're down there for a while, kind of let things blow down. Well, you know, we've talked about starting businesses and things like that. And I was thinking the other day, I said, man, if there was some kind of business we could start 
that would address illegal immigration. You know, I don't know what it is. Yeah, but something to address that. That's the business to start because you have to look. You always want to start a business that first of all you ask yourself what are the needs of the country or the community. They did. They call them check cash in places. They're the ones that started addressing the illegal population. Well, <laughs> they tell me take, if a, they tell take me a big if, chunk of their check when they cash it for them because they don't have an account. Now tell me if I'm wrong, and I may be completely wrong, but I want to say that I'm, I'm that this is what happened. But they they have cracked down on the money transfer places that are like the check cashing place. They do check cashing, but you can wire transfer money back to Mexico or back to different things like that. And uh, so much money was getting transferred back south. That they had to had to put the kibosh on that. It seems like I heard that. I don't know if they put a limit on what you can send per day or week, but it seemed like I've heard that. Yeah, and I may be yeah, maybe completely wrong about that, but I just I feel like somebody was mentioning that that yeah, that I was heard of that one. yeah just because it was getting so ridiculous. You know, it was a great because they. The U.S. I, government wants their cut, whether or not you're illegal or not. Right. Well, I, I think that's what it. I guess that's what I'm getting to. It's not so much as were these people illegal, were these people earning money the right way, the wrong way, or indifferent, but it was almost turning into a laundry, you know, money laundering scheme. So I think they did it under the guise of drug trafficking. It's like, okay, these guys are selling dope and they're sending their money back to this guy right across the border, you know, and they have to, you know, it, it may have been a legit, hey, we're sent like, your mom would send it to her cousin or mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're starving. I'm going to send them some money because I'm doing better up here. But, you know, it gets to the point where things are getting abused because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, like we're talking about social programs. Like, oh, well, that's a great way to launder money. Yeah. Yeah, we're losing, you know, 3% or a 2%. But, you know, if it gets, I don't have to get that drug money back across the border, you know, make these motherfuckers just send us four hundred dollars a day five hundred dollars a day every day and you know you're just that's how you launder it yeah so now you got you got clean money yeah maybe i should go into laund- money laundering business yeah they got a something on netflix ozarks man yeah, ozarks, you so gotta watch that shit I too oh man watch it i learned a lot <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is money laundering money laundering yeah, yeah. i eventually I stopped watching it but uh, oh they're working on season three now yeah. so i'm not going to I'm not going to get off into that because that'll go into a whole other thing. Oh. But we'll leave it at that. We'll just hope for the best, and, and we'll just keep hitting it up every week and seeing where we'll start making bets on how far they make it. <laughs> yeah. All the way.